This one? Okay. So I got this map from uh, JICA in a report from JICA, which shows you the flood prone areas in Metro Manila. The area that I'm going to talk about this is the uh, laser. The, is the Marikina River Basin. But uh, the simulation study went this all the way to uh, Manila Bay, actually. So this is uh, maybe just uh, to mention there are three major projects in flood control projects in West Manhattan, Pasig Marikina Improvement Project, and then you have the Kamanaba Flood Control Project. So. For this uh, simulation study, fortunately we have a watershed model for the uh, Marikina River Basin and that's the uh, sub-basin uh, villionation we have, which is about 168 sub-basins actually. You can see it quite uh, clearly, but uh, those are the basin numbering. Uh, so we're talking about the, uh, sorry, talking about the uh, the west slope of Sierra Madre is in here and then all the way down to this is where you have the Santo Nino gauging station, that's actually the Santo Nino bridge in Santo Nino Marikina and then you have the Rosario Weir Pasig River but for this simulation study we calculate the watershed inflow up to this point Santo Nino and then a 2D, uh, I mean a 1D network model takes over to the flood hydraulics of the Marikina River system so that's the model which uh, considers all the uh, processes, the hydrologic cycle. And the downstream part, starting in the Marigina Bridge, I mean the Santa Nina Bridge in Marigina, it goes all the way down to Manila Bay with, of course, uh, the Laguna Lake as a boundary condition as well as the uh, Manila Bay as a boundary condition. So the the Pasig Marikina River system is uh, represented by this, uh, what we call a network of one-dimensional channels. There are two more ch uh, three more channels here. One goes to Lagoon Lake Mangahan Floodway. You have Napindan Channel here, and then San Juan River here. So it's not shown here anymore, but uh, I, just, I, I just like to point out that that's, that's in San Antonio Bridge. There's the Provident Village here, the SM Mall in this loop. Rosario Way here, and then goes to the Manga and Flatway. Mm -hmm. And for that uh, model, we're using this uh, unit model. It's a steady uh, quasi two dimensional model. Now, for the uh, typhoon on the rainfall, we got this data from Pagasa. It says that uh, from 8 to 2 p.m., which is six hours, we have a total of 347 millimeters. And then down to nine hours, 413, 24 hours, uh, <coughs> 12 hours, 448. And there is this Pagasa website, they published the uh, rainfall intensity duration frequency data of Science Garden. And you have this, uh, for that particular 340 millimeters, it's approximately 100 to 150 years return period uh, rainfall. It's already uh, beyond this uh, plot. So we're just saying that, you know, if extrapolating this plot, then you can. So it's indeed a very high rainfall for that matter. Historically, in the science garden, six hour maximum rainfall, we have one in 1976. That's 294 in six hours. So not quite as big as that one. So we have 294, 242, etc. from 1965 to 2005. So that's quite a, a rare event as far as uh, hydrology is concerned. We also have this uh, rainfall data from Manila Observatory, Port Sea of uh, Ateneo de Manila, Manila Observatory. And then this uh, coincides with uh, the rainfall uh, that we apply in this model, although the magnitudes are a little bit different. In any case, uh, it's quite, uh, at around this period, you have hit the 60 something, but in the Pacasa Science Garden data, it went up to 92 millimeters, as you'll see in the next uh, slide. So that's uh, the 92 about. So, the meteorological day in the field starts at 8 a.m. So that's when you when you say that the last six hours they will they will peg it at 8 a.m. in the morning. So given that using the watershed model, somehow there's not quite a bit of uh, a lot of block time anymore at the peak rainfall because the such uh, the watershed is so saturated. You have barely 30 minutes actually from the upper part all the way down to 
Santo Nino, which is about uh, 10, 12 kilometers uh, distance. So again, when you talk about, uh, by the way, going back to the flood flow, we calculated the uh, Santo Nino, we reach a peak flow of 577 cubic meters per second. Quite significant, considering that the historical uh, uh, discharge in 1986 was the highest. If you have, I, I don't know how many years of data we have here, but uh, I think uh, 1958 to 2000. Yeah. It's 2650, that's what we observed in 1986. So it's quite, uh, again, the 577 is uh, twice as much, or, or even, even twice as much. And the associated return period could be over a hundred years the third period. Historically, I mean, the, there is this uh, frequency curve using Lagrange distribution for Santo Nino. I forgot the source of this one. But the hundred year period flood, I think it's the, from JICA study, it's only 3,300 cubic meters per second. So that's quite significant. Uh, it's twice, I mean, the 577 is quite big. In any case, given that you can see more or less the the relative place of this uh, 577, if you plot that, uh, so it's actually from this P, uh, Pasig Marigena River uh, improvement project. Uh, so that's the 577. So it's somewhere, if you extrapolate this, it should be somewhere here. So that's like a thousand, you know, but it, sometimes it's always, uh, this may be, I don't know how good is this as far as uh, extrapolating just straightforward like that. So in any case, uh, given those uh, results, I mean, given the hydraulic simulation study, this is uh, the one of the major results. You can get, this is the peak uh, water stages associated with that storm. Uh, just to give you an idea, if you, you have, uh, we have two plots here. This is the water surface computed, and then these are the bank elevations. This is the left over bank looking downstream. If you look downstream, the river flows from this to downstream. Looking downstream, that's the bank elevation. Uh, left side, that's the bank elevation. Right side is the bank elevation. Just to show you that uh, if you are in here and the water flows down here, this part, which is uh, Provident Village, is on the right hand side looking downstream. So if you look at this one, this is that. Uh, looking downstream on the right hand side, Providence Village is around station 7 to 12. So you see that the water stages reach as much as 12 or uh, 20 meters, and the bulk elevation is about 17. So you have almost 7 meters high water around the area in SM Mall. The bulk elevation, that's a little lower actually, the lower uh, bank of uh, Margin on the side on this side is a bit uh, around 17. You have also about 20, 20 I'm sorry, what should it be? 22.5, sorry. So this is about 7. So this is going to be about, same thing, about 7 uh, meters high. So that's the, what you see as far as the, uh, so around this area between uh, Osari Weir and Apindan definitely is flooded. And then around this area, it spilled over back, in other words. Uh, we have these numbers just to, it ranges from 12 meters high uh, flow depths from the minimum elevation, the talweg of the river, the minimum point of the river. So if you basically overbank, unfortunately we didn't compute, we don't table the overbank uh, elevations, it could be ranging from seven to three meters downstream here. But uh, just to give an idea, based on the simulation, we tried to validate with the uh, observations in the this is the part on the SM Mall side. Uh, I kept on mentioning about the SM Mall, but anyway, that's the uh, loop that you see uh, there. This part is that loop. So around this part, on the left-hand side, you have elevations of as high as 8 meters. And at the mall parking lot, the same level is about 5 meters. So it agrees full well with the this simulation. Like this in Provident Village, that Definitely, you can see almost uh, this uh, maybe six, seven meters high, five, six meters high. So this is the loop. Of, actually, the picture is here. So th this part is here, somewhere here. That's the LRT. This is the Marcos Highway. That part is in the in the mall. 
this picture, which was taken uh, from Google, it, the, uh, the mall is not yet finished. So that's the mall. It occupies quite a big uh, area there. So that's uh, as high as you can get. The, if you look at the profile of the water surface, that's the same thing as before. As far as the, this church is concerned, you have about 5,700 peaking here because you have local inflow coming in. And then uh, after the Mangahan floodway, it's only about 2,000 CMS, cubic meters per second, that went to Pasig River. In other words, about 3,600 went to uh, Mangahan floodway during that time. And as far as the velocity is concerned, <coughs> upstream of the uh, Mangahan floodway, that means in Marikina River, you have uh, velocities as high as uh, even 5 meters per second. That's quite a lot of uh, speed you know, as far as the river is concerned. Around here is about 1 to 2. That's a typical flood flow as, uh, velocity, about 1 meter per second. So you'll notice that around here, where you hit the Mangahan floodway, you have some increasing velocity. I'll show you later why is that. And similarly, maybe you can see, those are kind of highlights when you do all this uh, hydraulic computation. You have a little bit of a hump here. Again, the water surface went up. And I'll show you why later on. Maybe to kind of uh, tickle you with some flooding issues here. So this uh, flood inundation uh, map in blue, which we manually, because we are not quite GIS people, <laughs> manually got it from the, uh, the results of the, the model. So that's the extent of the flood inundation. You'll notice here, not quite the flood inundation up to here, but of course here in Mangahan flood way all the way to Kaintak. The lake is somewhere here. It's all flooded. Until now, I think this area is still flooded because you have a very high uh, Laguna Lake elevation. So, just to bring up some issues here, we were talking about, uh, we can talk about river obstruction. You have the main channel, you have a flood plain supposedly, the Providence Village and this one, and then talking about if you have a meandering river like this, as a rule in geomorphology, fluvial uh, geomorphology, you're not supposed to build anything uh, six times the width of the river. So that's uh, an issue that, hmm. you know, I think I've been seeing in the, was it the blog or the Facebook, people talking about there uh, used to be in Providence Village, uh, that used to be flooded way back then and so on. So. The other thing I mentioned, there was an increase of velocity of about 5 meters per second around this area. There is a, quite a constriction here, and that's the Rosario here. That's where you saw a hump in the water stage, and you can see it for yourself. You can use the Google map or you can... Right, so anyway, this area, if you are in this, what we call the Manalo Bridge, there is this uh, bridge, and you can see this, the uh, Rosario Weir, but definitely what you see as an obstruction is what the water sees as an obstruction. It's like, uh, pretend that you have the water and then you hit that, you can go around this way and maybe jump a little bit. That's actually, uh, this is uh, much more telling. Uh, on the side, there is this uh, open house today, that you might want to be interested in, you know, that's that. Uh, <laughs> and in fact, if you look at the picture, I'm sorry, there is a river uh, at the back of this uh, condominium. That's an artist uh, rendering, maybe. Imagine that the water will go up seven meters high. Uh, you have a nice uh, surfing at the back here. Another, uh, another issue, of course, is the Mangahan flood day. But of course, it was able to actually uh, convey design flow. So that's quite uh, important. But the Magan floodway, because although it was able to, dis to, to be able to uh, move so much water, but still there was a significant rise in water. It was originally designed for 260 meters wide channel. It's 14 meters uh, elevation uh, with a one meter freeboard. So this is the road. This is the road. And inside the channel you have the community. Yeah. But I think a lot of them were removed uh, suddenly during that time. But some of them were able to structurally, very, very structurally uh, design shanties. Because some of them still, still standing up there. So that's uh, 
These are, by the way, kampong na or yeah, kampong, kampong. But that's the road. That's the road. So it's about 40 meters smaller. And in fact, we went up here. I, I, I didn't upload the pictures anymore, but the elevations went up to 15.5 to 16 at the where you have the Mangahan uh, Road. You know this this one. So definitely, it went two two meters higher than the desired water. Uh, so, and finally, I just want to show this one. There, there is supposedly a, what we call the EFCOS, Effective Flood Control Operation System for Metro Manila. In fact, this is a very nice system. You have a, a real-time telemetering uh, of rainfall and then even water elevations. And you're supposed to send it to this uh, station here, this uh, Rosario uh, office of this EFCOS, process the data, and then they there was the micro model, which is the, uh, quite an expensive model, and then forecast the the river elevation so on. But uh, but what happened? This continued, they said, since it was uh, turned over to uh, MMDA. So just to finish up my talk, just want to mention that uh, I think the CP uh, mentioned about uh, with the advanced modeling computi uh, computational uh, computing technologies, we could have really done real time early warning system. Like if you have a model in place like what I just showed you, it takes only a few minutes to run that, given the rainfall. So if you have a rainfall forecast, fill it in, you're going to forecast uh, the flows. And same technologies, of course, can be used for long-term studies. And there are these flood issues which we have to uh, seriously look at, urbanization, modification of waterways, and also local drainage. Actually, this is quite an important uh, matter that like now, uh, Kainta is still flooded because of local drainage, but of course, uh, how to move it out? Maybe move it to Laguna Lake, but Laguna Lake is also about 14 meters high this time. And they said that I think it reached about 14, way back, uh, I don't know how many, 1919 or something like that. The last time it was 14.2 or 3 elevation. And it was over top, so it's 100 years ago, the last time that you reached 14. And of course, with the extreme events uh, due to climate change, <laughs> when, you, when I mention this, hopefully I get some money. But anyway, you can of course uh, do conduct this flood risk uh, hazard mapping uh, based on uh, with the climate change incorporated in it. Thank you very much. I think that's it.